you join me in Birmingham, the city where many cars were built over the years, but the car in question today that we're hopefully gonna pull out is actually a German car, a big coupe from the early 80s when coupes were seen as being very executive, a nice big cruiser, and this thing's actually quite a lesser seen car. I think it's a bit of a survivor, so I've got the barn find fleece on because this is a barn find edition of The Late Break Show. I'm Johnny Smith. So although I finished up at the garage door in question, we've actually got to go through the garden path to get to the car and to meet the owner. Come on through. This is Job. Job, right. really good to meet you. So you are, well, your dad owns the car. Yeah. The car's been in the family longer than you have. Very much, yeah. And uh, it lives in there at the end of the garden path. Um, I purposely don't see these cars before we start filming because I just I want to kind of like reveal it in real time with you. But from what I've been told, I think it's a bit of a survivor car. Yeah. Very it much, hasn't been good, used yeah. since what, 2005? Yeah, 2006, I think. Yeah. Um, so we don't know if it will, we'll get it running today, but what we do know is we'll be able to uh, uncover it, maybe give it a clean and pull it outside. Um, and give it a best shot. And I brought along a friend of mine who knows a lot about these cars because he's bought a lot of them over the years. And I'll introduce you to him in a minute, but let's go and have a look at the car if that's all right. Now you're gonna be more familiar with a different type of car with an Opal badge. You've probably heard of the Opal Manta. Well, this was the bigger, more executive, more expensive, more powerful brother. The Opel Monza. God, it's, it looks nice and dry in here, which I'm pleased about. And the usual, I'm quite used to seeing now on Barn Finds, carpet, packaging, old beds, sort of filling up the car and, and plenty of dust. But the thing about these is, they're just not known about compared to the sort of Ford, BMW equivalent. People know about a 635 CSI BMW, for example. Well, this was around at the same time as that. Um, An Opal was the sort of premium badge of Vauxhall back then, which they did sell in the UK, not just Germany and other parts of the world. So tell me about it a bit then. So your dad bought it and um, he said to me he used it fa a fair amount and then his work circumstances changed and his life circumstances changed. Yeah. Had so more children. He already had, he already had two cars, which, was, which my mom and he were driving. So it was expensive to maintain the third one yeah then my brother was born and i was born and he just slowly had less and less time to drive it so he just got stuck in here and i guess uh, it is understandable a three litre coupe as a daily driven family car is probably not hugely hugely practical that's the thing you know this is quite a powerful car for its time and this is a this is a gse model which was you know a pretty pretty nice thing i'm just looking around it because I'm, I'm thinking the paint in looks in remarkable condition i am wondering whether or not we might have a quite nice conditioned thing underneath here so we'll dig it out and then i'll um I'll, I'll bring in my friend john who knows a hell of a lot more about monzas than i this man here is called john lakey john lakey has been uh, a motoring writer worked behind the scenes in tv car tv for years top gear being one of the things loads of classic car magazines as well as uh, racing legends for the love of cars salvage hunters classic cars gears and tears all cars of the star. oh so uh, the cars are stars uh, john's been been and done all of the good car shows but john also happens to live a quite close to where we are today and b you're a massive Opel Monza pervert, which I didn't know. I am. Yeah, I've, I've had an Opel Monza since 1982. Wow. And I've had about probably 10 Opel Monzas in that time, but I've still got the one that I had in 1982. That is mega. So I thought I'll bring John along because he is an oracle on these cars anyway. Uh, and I knew he wouldn't be able to resist the catnip <laughs> of me saying to him, I've just found a barn find Monza that's actually really close to where you live. So we're going yeah, to, I'd like, I'd like to, I thought if you help me uncover it and um, have a closer look at it, but also get a bit more of a backstory on this sort of lesser spotted kind of Luxo coupe, 
as was. All I know about it is that it shares the underpinnings with a lot of other voxels of, of that era, sort of late 70s, early 80s. Yeah. Um, but I don't know a lot about the specific, the GSE, which is what this is, three litre. So while I'm moving this huge old bed, can you explain to me about yeah. it? Yeah, shall I move stuff as well? You can yeah, move yeah, some yeah. of this, because okay. we've, we got, we've got to expose yeah. this got, car. Got to expose the car, Because yeah, I, I, I'm hoping that this might be a bit of a survivor. So there was a, there was a tradition in, in the German car market of making two-door coupes out of the large car that the manufacturer made. Ford used to do it, the Granada Coupe, obviously is a good example of that. Absolutely. And there was a Commodore Coupe from the previous generation Commodore from the early 70s. And there was a Commodore Coupe from the Commodore before that in the 60s, which looked like a miniature Dodge Charger. I know the You know one. what I mean? Yeah. Fantastic looking car. Yeah. Um, and so actually, when, when the Senator Carlton, what they call the V-Class floor pan, came out in 76 i think is that when it was 76 i think so i'd have to double check that whether it's 75 or 76 when the when the first car with that floor pan was launched but um when the v-class floor pan came out yeah it was logical for them to make a coupe but they kind of went one better and instead of just making a two-door version of the four-door saloon yeah they harked back to the 60s dodge charger looking opal commodore yeah and made the Opel Monza. Right. In what is now called Series 1 guys, which had slightly different headlights and different trim and different dashboard and different seats and things like that. And was available in Germany and in Europe in a, you know, in two litre form and, and two and a half litre and three litre form. Yeah. And came over here as the um, Vauxhall Royale Coupe. The Royale. As well as the Opel Monza. Yeah. So they, they made Series 1 Monza, Series 2 Monza, which faced to the lights and again, different dashboard, different seats. And then they cut all the other coupes in the UK. So in Germany, you could still buy two litre or whatever, base model, wind up windows, things like that. Yeah. But um, in the UK, they just went from 19, late 1983, right, the only coupe you're gonna be able to buy is the Monza GSE. The top spec. The top spec one, which was the more sporty one. So it sits about an inch lower, stiffer springs, which are rising rate springs. So when you take these to bits, you, get, you look at the coil spring, it's thicker in the middle, than it is at the top and the bottom, which gives you a nice, clean, comfortable, low speed ride in town. But when you want to tank on, it stiffens up. Very clever, very simple, but this it actually is... works really well. Yeah. Um, and you got Recaro seats, digital dash, uh, spoilers, don't want spoiler on the back and the front. Yes, yeah, color coded. Yeah, yeah it's color coded. All... And also a, um, a side skirts in, in black, and everything went black. So on my three litre E, this is silver. Okay. But obviously on the GS, and also the door handles are silver. But obviously on the GSE, because it was the 80s, yeah. everything had to be matte black. It did, it did. Because it was the 80s. I think what we'll do now is we will open the garage door and we'll have a look at it from around there. We'll, we'll see if we can get a look around it and then get the tyres inflated. Yeah? Yeah, that makes Good. sense. I'm up for that. Right. I'll pull. Okay, yeah. Okay, there we go. Right. It looks bright. That is that is good, yeah, isn't it? Yeah. Because the, a the tailgate always rots along here, which yep. it hasn't, and also the spoilers lift at the corners because the, there's a captive nut inside the rubber, and that corrodes, and the and the spoiler kind of looks like a British Rail sandwich, sort of curled <laughs> up at the edges. You no, know? this is mint. All the tyres are flat. Right. But uh, access is reasonable, so I'll get this sort of bed frames out of the way. Okay. And uh, see if we can get the Monza inflated. <laughs> and then we'll have a You're look. You're not going to inflate the tyres, you're just going to inflate the car. Just inflate it. It's ego. <laughs> Did you used to sleep in this? In the garage or in the bed? <laughs> We've just been searching around the workshop because a certain Muppet, me, forgot to bring a foot pump. And we found a new old stock foot pump. Of all the things, look, it's meant to be. Richmond tools we need everywhere. A 20 years ago. A Richmond foot pump, look at it. Oh, and it's a double barrel. Oh, it's double barrel. We're, we're, this is going to get a serious workout. There'll be some heat in this in the next five minutes and I suspect in my armpits. Right, let's go.
fleece is on. The fleece is on. The fleece is on. Burning, burning, burning. It's on the street. The fleece is on and all four tyres have accepted air, which means we're one step further to getting it out there in the daytime, which is looking like a rainstorm shortly. So we're going to get it out there, have a look at it out in the sun. And then we'll see if there's a chance of getting it running. I mean, I like a brown interior, but a brown sports interior. Yeah, chocolate brown Recaro. It's, I think the, there was two options, black or brown. I think the brown was rarer than the black, but that's only because I've owned more cars with black. <laughs> so that it may not be true at all. Um, but no, it's got the GSC leather steering wheel, which yeah. is a lovely thing. Yeah. Standard Monza steering wheel, with but the dimple, leather. Dimples for the horns. With the dimples for the horns, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And so, the, the steering lock isn't damaged which often gets damaged here, but that seems to be working and fine. Whenever, I mean, you, you, I've noticed it's got an electric sunroof. Yep, yeah. it's quite, quite likely to have an electric sunroof. I haven't managed to look yet. Where's the that feels like a leather headlining. No, it's, it, isn't it? Leather. it isn't leather, but it feels, it's like a faux leather. Yeah, it is an electric sunroof. Yeah. yeah. And the, the headlining is a sort of plasticky, faux-y sort of plastic leather, if you know what I mean. So yeah, access to the fuel tank under there. So. Knowing that the weather's going to turn shortly, I'm inclined to do the things, things this way. We, we get it out here like we have and give it a little clean. Well, should we look under the bonnet first while we've got it out? You can't resist. I can't resist. No, I want, I want to find out whether it's an ABS car. Come on then, pop it. All right, still got it sound deadening. Bloody that. hell, that looks really nice. And also no sign of mice. No, Just, I'm which all right is really with... important. Yeah, spiders are cool, but mice... Where is it that one or is it... No, it's... Uh... Uh, is it that? Odd. Yeah, it is that. Seems low, but... Yeah, it's further away than it normally is. I've not been under the bonnet of a Monza ever. Have you not? No, so I'm sure you've been under... Uh, been uh, more than I probably should have been, <laughs> yes. But I can tell you this is not an ABS car. Okay, so no ABS. No ABS, no aircon. So it, it's, it's this sort of base spec for a GSC, the only option being the electric sunroof. Yeah. Shall I take, I might take the plugs out then and then spray a little bit of oil down them. Yeah. We can always do the initial turnover with no yeah, compression. Yeah, I think that's very sensible. Yeah. So let's do that. Yeah. Well, shall I take the plugs out while you wash? Deal. Okay. Right. It started to rain as predicted, uh, which means Mother Nature wants us to wash this car. And the, <laughs> the aerial keeps coming up and going back down again. But apart from that, we've got dash lights. John's gonna take the plugs out, but I'm just gonna give it a little wash. This is not a detailing video. I'm using a soft tea towel. Please don't judge me. We're using the facilities that we've got here. The car is kept at Jonathan, the owner's mum's house, or Job's nana's house. Boom. Atmospheric transformation in the rain. Right, quick recap time now that the uh, monsoon has passed. Um, plugs are out, John took the plugs out. We've put oil down the bores. Um, I've just taken off the fuel line where the fuel comes in from the electronic fuel pump at the back there, electric fuel pump. Comes in here and there's some sort of regulator which has a much more Germanic name that John was now gonna demonstrate. Well, it's called an evener. A fuel evener. In the book. And I've just, I'm gonna take, take that off, which I have done. I highly recommend a jar, Kenco is fine. And I'm gonna just, we're gonna turn the ignition on and see if the fuel pump primes and dribbles into there. We'll look at the state of the fuel. I've got a fresh gallon of super unleaded anyway. We're gonna use that. And then we can turn it over 
um, with the plugs out. Once we know it's okay and we're getting some fuel through, we'll make a decision to stick some fuel in at the uh, tank end and we can put the plugs back in and we can see if there's any fire in the hole. Right. Right, knob is on start. Great. Ready? Ignition on. Well, it turns over. It does, it was draining a lot of power then. I don't think it was running. Okay, there's a solenoid or something clicking somewhere. There is. But there's no petrol coming out that I can see. The engine wasn't actually trying to turn then, was it? It was, it did. I saw the fan move. Do it oh, again. Okay. Are the belts free? I think so, do it again. Yeah, yeah, the engine is turning over. Oh, it is? Yeah, it's turning over, definitely. Okay. Yeah. I'm getting full, absolutely amazing digital dash uh, display here, which is still, ex still exciting all these years later. Now we know it's definitely not seized. It's freely yeah. uh, moving the engine, turning it over. Put the plugs back in, even connect the king lead. And what we could do, we could put that gallon of fuel in. Well, let's put the gallon of fuel in first and see if we can get some fuel to come out of the pipe okay. before we start reconnecting king leads and yep. plugs and the like, don't you think? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm gonna give it in excess of a gallon of E5. I'll probably end up going and giving it another gallon. Mm. I think if it's totally empty and it's evaporated away. Well, it, that could be a good thing. Mm, could, yeah, exactly. Because if it ain't there, it can't gunge anything up. No, so. exactly, yeah. Right, I'm gonna do that again. Turn it over, see if any fuel comes out. It's electric fuel pump. Okay, we have a dashboard. It's still showing red on the fuel gauge. Yeah. Well, let's so just see. Hands if it... clear. Yeah. No, nothing so far. No fuel. No, no fuel. I'm going to turn I don't it back think on. There's to... enough fuel in there. You but we haven't heard the fuel pump. I mean, I can no. go down on my knees and listen. Is it this side? It's, or this? Yeah, it's just there. Okay, hands right. clear. Clear. Okay. Any pot? Any petrol? No, I don't think there is any. No. Go no. for one more. No. And I can't hear the pump well, working think, either. I don't think the pump's working. No. So we either we get under there and play with the pump or I've just attached a specialist funnel tool, which I've now becoming well known for on Barn Finds on the Late Break Show, which involves two different gauges of fuel line hastily co cobbled together. I, I can pour fuel down its neck. Okay. And we can see if we get fire in the hole. Yep, but I think that makes sense. Shall we? Put the plugs and in before there. we do that, if we put some of the plugs in, do you want to put a plug charger on it and see if we've got a spark at the plugs on the, you know, I've got a plug indicator in the car if you want, if we want to do that? Yeah. Yeah? That okay. would be wise, yeah. So let's put the plugs back in then and then I'll go and get my plug indicator. Yeah. Plugged it back, it should be okay now. Yeah. It did one rollover and it got a spark. Right, in which case, let's just jump it off a car then. Yeah. It's not gonna fire unless I pour, pour petrol in it, is it? No, it isn't, no. So, do you wanna just see if it makes a difference yeah. first of all? Do we need to spray a bit of fuel down inside the sort of, the kind of plenum? Wouldn't be a bad idea, would it? Yeah. Okay. Are we on, we all good? Yeah. Shall I turn over? Yeah. It started. Yeah. I want to get the, the jar within arm's reach so I can tip it from the jar in. Yeah. Because as soon as it starts sucking, yeah. it'll suck from it'll here. It'll suck from here, yeah. Exactly. That's the theory anyway. Yeah. So I'm just going to do that. You say when. Three, two, one. No.
Oh, it's slow. Yeah, it is. I think we need to let the, the, the Cupra catch up. Yeah. One more go. Yeah. Oh. It is, it is uh, sparking. Yeah, and it's smelling of burnt fuel as well. Yeah. So yeah, it is, I mean, it was running then for a second, wasn't it? Or half a second. Kinda. Yeah. So yeah. I think we've done pretty well on that front. Doing well, we know the engine's fundamentally okay. Yeah. Which is always a good start. Well, I just, I mean, it probably just needs the contacts cleaning. Yeah, uh, it, it'll be, Somewhere down the line, the fuel pump isn't being triggered. Now, whether that's the fuel pump relay yeah. or something else, I don't know. Yeah. But it, that's what's the fundamental problem. We got so excited earlier, washing it, having a look at the digi dash and all that stuff, and those Recaros, we actually forgot to look in the boot. So before we carry on with any more dilly-dallying around, I thought, Let's lift this incredible body-coloured spoiler boot. I think the struts are tied. Yeah, the oh, God, that water just ran down my neck. And because uh, it has been slashing down today. It's not, it's not been the easiest of film days. So this is a two-part parcel shelf. Yeah, so if you pull that towards you, it'll come off. Okay, and I'm just yeah. going to place it up there. That's immaculate. Yeah, it's okay. It's faded a little bit, but it's fine. Bit of UV, but, you know, between friends. Oh, well, bugger me. There were some booster cables in here. And look at that. Now, isn't that a wonderful piece of design? Wow, that's so curvaceous. It's lovely, isn't it? Yeah. And it is a box for all your useful things. Let's put that back. That's an amazing, that's it's quite, lovely, quite expensive. It's a lovely bit of design, isn't it? Yeah, but probably unnecessarily expensive, but... Oh, wow. Cause some seriously... Look at the condition but it, of this. So the thing is, it was an executive car, Johnny. That's why it's got so much sound deadening in it. You yeah, look at the depth of the sound deadening there that you're holding. Look how thick that sound deadening is. That is really You thick. don't get that in many 1970s cars. No. Which this is a 70s car, effectively. So when your dad had one, did he feel the quality? Mm, yeah, yeah, he loved it. He thought it was so much better than the SD1 that we looked at. I bet it was. Because it's just a nicer quality thing. Yeah. And even I know someone who's got a 944 and a Monza, and they reckon the Monza's better built than their 944. <laughs> really? Yeah. Checked my well out. That look, little a little bit of surface scab there, but that's just nothing. Yeah. That is body coloured, bright. Yeah. Look, really nice. It's never been repaired, has it that? No. And there's two jacks. There's a jack in there, and then there's another one there. So it must have got one from a scrapyard or must have been found one in a salvage yard and that is just what yeah. that lovely. is lovely, isn't it? It's a really, really lovely proper car this. It isn't is. It? You, you needs saving. It's good. I think you're going to put it back on the road imminently, and I'm sure that you and your pals at, in sure the club will you join be, the club. Will be instrumental in yeah, that. Yeah, I'm sure we can help. Absolutely. I ruddy love this. I think it looks so stylish. I keep staring at it with that ducktail spoiler and everything, going, "Yeah, that looks cool." I thought about this. I'm used to seeing more relays on my car, but of course my car's got more stuff on it. Yeah. It's aircon, it's ABS. It's also got some other stuff on it that uses relays that this car doesn't have. Yeah. So. And Jonathan I've, drove this in here. And Jonathan and drove hasn't this touched in here. It. So I squirted some, some uh, cleaner onto the fuel yeah. pump relay. Yeah. And um, I think now we jack it up. Yeah. Jonathan's found us a 12 volt meter because neither of us have bought a multimeter with us, which we should have done. I didn't think about that yeah. and you didn't either. Yeah. But hey ho. He's got us a 12 volt meter. We see if we've got 12 volts on across the fuel pump yep. when we trigger the ignition. Yeah. Right. If we have, then there should be no reason why it wouldn't. Start. Or we just we just attach it to a 12 volt battery directly. Or just we see if it whizzes into volt life. Feed. Yeah, yeah. We attach a 12 volt feed. That's not a bad way of doing it. Yeah. If we haven't got 12 volts. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Right. Action. Before dark. You're a lucky man multiple Monza owner, and then I say, hey, John, do you want to get under another Monza that's not even yours? And you go, yeah, I'd love to. <laughs> and here you are on a boggy ground, lying on a piece of MDF. Yeah. Life it's is a glamorous good. life, yes. this filmmaking lark, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, life is good. <laughs>
Is that the fuel pump just there above the drive shaft? Yes, more or less. Is it? Yeah. I can, I can see it quite well from here. Yeah. Does it look like, like it's got corroded contacts? Not really, no, to be honest, because the, the rubber covers have, cut, have, been, have been in place and they're dry. Right, okay, so I've got, I can get the cables to the, to the 12 volt yeah. points on the pump. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So what we want to do now then is get the jump leads on the car. Yeah, they're on. Uh, get, the, get the Cupra started. Yeah. And then try to start the Monza. Yeah. And let me have the 12 volt meter on to see whether the fuel pump has got 12 volts when you're trying to start the car. Right, meter is in position. Lights work. And the buzzer to tell you you've left the lights on works. Okay. Okay, meter is in position. Put the ignition on. Ignition's on. All the lights are on. Okay, no power. No power. Do you want me to try and f turn it over once? Now try and turn it over once, yep. Okay. No, not a flicker. Right, so fuel pump not playing. So the fuel pump relay has almost certainly failed. Yeah. So the yeah. next thing to do is to get the fuel pump relay off and shake it, isn't it? Right, I'm on the body of the fuel pump in what I believe to be the correct way. Right, okay. Do you want me to... Um... So give it a turn over. Okay, ignition on, digital display on, and then I'm going to go for a turn. Yeah. Okay, still no 12 volt signal. Also, I haven't heard the fuel pump go at all. No, see, I'm just thinking that we... Right, do one more turn. No, not, not a whisper. Not a sausage. No, okay. so let's do the fuel pump relay. Yeah. And see if we can get the fuel pump to come to yeah. life. Relays are usually, there's no, oh, is that a hole, do you think, in the top there? No, it's a molding. It's just it a is, mold. isn't it? It's yeah. just a molding, isn't it? Yeah, okay. Yeah, because yeah, they usually put each difficult know, do, to get do into. Do you tap it? Do you need to sometimes tap yeah. it? Yeah, that's what I was going to do if I couldn't squirt some jollop into it. Yeah. Because you should hear them click when you turn the ignition. Yeah. Sometimes I just put my fingers over it and you feel it, you can yeah. feel it move. Yeah, can't exactly. You? Yeah. Good car. It's basically a good car. But I think we might need an e fuel pump relay. Damn do you want to turn the. Um, Ignition on. Ignition see on. if it clicks. And I'll feel, see if I can feel it yeah, clicking. Just it try and start the car. No, I won't try and start it. Or do the ignition first. I'll just do the ignition click, because we know we haven't got any fuel. Yeah, but it might only be triggered when you turn the starter motor. So that's the ignition lights on. Okay, no fuel pump relay click. I'll try now. Yep. Ah, yeah, it clicked. Did it? Yeah. Right. It clicks, definitely. So here's, if that clicks, I mean, you could just bypass that and see about connecting some crocky clips. No. No. Okay. It's not making it, it's not working. Not a peep. No. No. So we've, we've got, We've got three possible faults here. We've got a faulty fuel pump relay, which is clicking, but isn't clicking enough. We've got a faulty fuel pump that's seized up with gunge and thus won't work. Or we've got faulty wiring between yeah. the fuel pump relay and the fuel pump. Yeah. Those are our three faults, aren't they? So what I'm going to do, this is just bonkers now. We should have gone home for dinner ages ago. Um, what we're doing is we're using the 12 volt battery off the SEAT to just directly attach two wires, positive, negative, onto the Bosch fuel pump under here. And we'll see if we can get it to fire into life by bypassing everything apart from just a feed of electricity. If we can get it to fire, we'll know that it works. And theoretically, pump the couple of gallons we've just put in there straight up to the engine bay. Then we could connect the fuel pipes as per mm. OEM. As per the car was And then designed. start cranking it with fuel being actually delivered, but full time, not stopping this way. Tell me when. Yeah. Okay. 
not a peep. No. I just don't think the fuel pump is alive. I think that fuel pump, I mean, I think it, that we, fuel pump is seized. It's not, yeah, it is seized, I'm sure it is. There's yeah. no delivery of any, there's no vibration, yeah. okay. there's no noise. She dared. Yeah, okay. Clearly it's night time. We've tried numerous things. Uh, we can't get the Monza to work tonight. Uh, I hope that doesn't dishearten you too much. Uh, it's been a lovely survivor car with a fuel pump. I think she'll run. Um, and I really like it. I think it's ace. So thanks very much to Jonathan and his son Job for letting us come along. Thanks to John Lakey for trying for hours. Any other solutions to get another big three litre fired up? Um, like and subscribe. If you know of another car that you think of is of interest for barn finds, it's in a hedge, a field, a garage or an actual barn, let me know. There's a contact email in the description below. And maybe you want to become a patron of this channel where you'll typically be able to watch episodes like this early. Go ahead. There's a link in description. And thank you. I'm comfortable here. I'm going to lie here for a while and then I'll go home. <laughs>